boy. Guys. What is going on? This is the Club of the Man 1993 coming at you. This is the 28th edition of this retro Royal Rumble match recap and review series. As we have two Rumbles left after we talk about this one. And if you notice, the shirt I am wearing. The back. Roman Reigns. One versus all. This was a shirt that I got for Christmas in 2014. It was one of the top shirts I wanted because I was digging and just striving to see what the WWE would do to Roman Reigns. Because when the Shield split up in 2014, you know, I mean, I was, you know, Want to see what they were doing with Seth Rollins and his heel work? I was already digging what they were doing with Dean Ambrose as a babyface. Roman Reigns, I, I was loving it at first. But then this night came. I had heard the rumors. I had seen the, the bigger picture of what could possibly happen and go wrong. And it would just put a huge dagger on the career of this man. This date was January 25th, 2015. The location was the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And as always, the winner of this match got a number one contendership to face the WWE World Heavyweight Champion at WrestleMania 31, which they would be facing the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. Let's talk about this event. Let's just get right into it. The number one and two entrants were The Miz and Our truth They were both, as you remember them, the awesome truth back in 2011. Number three entrant was a surprise return. Bubba Ray Dudley. Later on in the year, uh, Devon and Bubba would return as a full-time tag team and go on a run for about a year. Despite the fact that at times they felt kind of pointless. I mean, at first beginning, they were great. A few of the Y family was fine. But then after that, they just kind of went a little bit like, you know, nowhere, kind of. Um, but um, Bubba would would eventually, with the help of our truth you know, help him. Pretty much our truth was filling in for Devon in this match, doing, a, you know, stuff that, you know, the Dudleys would do. Because this was the first time in 10 years we've seen one of the Dudley boys. And actually, it was also the first ever Royal Rumble match by any of the Dudley boys, period. Um, so we saw some 3D, a what's up, you know, strike to the nuts on The Miz. Um, they had 3D on, um, on The Miz. They would eliminate The Miz. And right before number four entrant came out, um, the Dudley also eliminated uh, our truth the number four entrant was Luke Harper. And at this time, the Y family were split up. Well, Bray Wyatt had set them both free. And Luke Harper did have a brief run with the Intercontinental Championship until he gave it back to Dolph Ziggler, until Dolph Ziggler lost it, uh, the first Raw of the new year to Bad News Barrett. Remember him? Do you miss him at all? Um, so right now, Luke Harper is a singles competitor. Um, the number five entrant was... Bray Wyatt. This time also Luke Harper was the heel. Bray Wyatt was still a heel also, uh, but they weren't together. So um, Harper and Wyatt did double team on Bubba, and they eliminated him. Now number six was supposed to be Curtis Axel, but as he's making his way to the ring, Eric Rowan attacked him. Now Eric Rowan was not supposed to be in this match, because if you remember the Survivor Series angle where um, Rowan, Harper, and um, Ryback were all fired once Cena was forced to bring back the authority. A very weak way, I, I gotta say, after they, they eliminated them. Uh, Big Show was part of that team also, but if you remember Big Show turned heel during that match, which we're going to be ranting about Big Show in a little bit. So um, when Harper, when, when the authority came back, they fired um, Rowan, Ryback, and Ziggler until Cena won a three-on-one handicap match on Raw to bring them back, thanks to the help from Sting. Um... But um, when they came back, back though for that episode of SmackDown, 
all three of them, and also a fourth person, we'll get to him shortly, had qualifying matches to keep their spots in the Rumble, and the only one that didn't win was Eric Rowan. But he came out and attacked um, Curtis Axel and got into the ring, and it was pretty much, you know, just a um, a, a triple threat, three-way, whatever you want to call it, between the Wyatt family members for a couple minutes until Bray Wyatt eliminated both Harper and Rowan. So this time, Bray Wyatt was the only man in the ring. So, so far, it's going all right. Number seven was the Boogeyman. The Eater of Worms. Eater of Words versus the Eater of Worms, they were saying currently. But the Boogeyman didn't last long. He was eliminated by Bray Wyatt. Number eight was Sin Cara, who um, came out. But, of course, Bray Wyatt would then eliminate him. So Bray Wyatt's looking dominating. And number nine came out, Zack Ryder, who had been out for a couple months due to a rotator cuff injury. He was back a little bit sooner than I think they expected, but of course, it's Zack Ryder. You didn't expect anything much from him. Bray Wyatt eliminated him. Now, here is the biggest reason why this Royal Rumble match tanked. Wasn't yet, though. The number 10 entrant was Daniel Bryan. And as we all know, Daniel Bryan was out for eight months with a, after having neck, neck surgery. A surgery he put off for about almost a year, I'd say. He almost put off the, the surgery. Because uh, when he first started the injury in 2013, the doctors told him it was functional at the time, but at some point you're going to have to get surgery. And then, you know, he won the title uh, at WrestleMania. He had a match with Kane at Extreme Rules, but then a week later he gave in and said, I had to get this done. So had he gotten the surgery sooner, he would have probably recovered quicker than he did because he was supposed to recover in six to eight weeks. So they kept the title on him. But then he wasn't going to be cleared anytime soon. So they stripped him the title, and he announced his entrance into the Royal Rumble and his return on the final Raw of 2014. Um, so he came in number 10. It's him and Bray Wyatt, which they met, They mentioned their feud they had uh, last year. I remember that, of course. And the match they had at the Royal Rumble 2014 pay-per-view. Holy heck, that was an awesome opening match for that show. Very awesome. If you have not seen it, go back and watch it. But Brian came out number 10 anyways. Number 11 was Fondango, except he was considered the new and improved Fondango. He was now a salsa dancer with Rosa Mendez. He was number 11. Number 12 was Tyson Kidd, who at this point uh, started um, teaming up with um, Cesaro. Number 13, formerly known as Cody Rhodes, was Stardust, and Daniel Bryan would eliminate Tyson Kidd. Number 14 was a surprise entrant, now Hall of Famer, Diamond Dallas Page. Number 15 was Rusev. Now I gotta say, despite getting this, not gonna be in a good review at the end. Rusev did have a good showing in this Rumble match. He was United States champion, but I didn't quite like what they did with him at the end. Um, Rusev eliminated DDP, and then he eliminated Fandango. Now, again, Daniel Bryan is the hottest name in this Rumble match, and people wanted him to go far in this match, and maybe even win this match to get his title shot, a rematch for the title he never lost, even if it was against Brock Lesnar. And back at Dan guys' house, we were all hyped up there, like just hyped up. Yeah, we were loving what was going on in this Rumble so far. It was great. But then the heartbreaker came when Bray Wyatt just pushed Daniel Bryan off the apron and made Daniel Bryan look like an idiot, a weak link, eliminating him from the match in just 10 minutes. Daniel Bryan was entered at number 10, he was eliminated before number 16 came out. And the crowd was dead for almost the rest of the match. And we were energetic, and all of a sudden it's like... And I will not forget, I looked over at my friend Dan. This was him. He looked like he was boiling up. As I was inside, it was one of those moments like, what did you just do? Did you learn from your mistake from last year, even though it ended up working out in the end with what happened with Batista winning the Rumble, not even putting Brian in the match, to putting Brian in the match and making him look like a weak, just weak, 
He made him look weak in this match. I already did him eliminate Tyson Kidd. What else did Brian do in this match? So the crowd was dead. They already didn't care. I was already done with this match when that happened. Because Brian didn't have to win this match. to. Okay, this Royal Rumble match did not fall apart just because Brian didn't win. Because Brian wasn't utilized well in this match. And so many others weren't as well. But just who they gave the center stage to for the biggest moment of all. So Daniel Bryan got eliminated by Bray Wyatt before number 16 came out, which was Gold Dust. Number 17 was Kofi Kingston, followed by number 18, Adam Rose. And then this is when I'll say try doing, you know, Kofi's, you know, cool thing where he got thrown out, but he landed right into the Rose Buds, and they just, you know, walked around the ring carrying him and then sent him back in. Whatever, it wasn't really that cool. I, th I think after that, Kofi's, you know, Cool spots kind of wore off on him. Uh, also, Kofi Kingston was actually part of the New Day. Also, I forgot to mention it. This was the New Day's um, like second month or so, but New Day was very green, and no one really in the New Day weren't like back then. Um, but the later on years, they would become the hottest tag team in the tag team division. Um, but Rusev would eliminate uh, Adam Rose, and then after Kofi got back in, he'd be eliminated by Rusev. Number nineteen. The booze launched big time. Roman Reigns entered number 19. And funny thing was, uh, the commentary team did mention that Roman Reigns was entering number 19. The same number that John Cena entered in the 2013 Royal Rumble when he won the whole thing. And what are they trying to do? Make Roman Reigns the next John Cena. He got into the match. He eliminated both Stardust and Goldust. All right. But then what did he do? We get to number 20, which is Big E. Again, he was part of the New Day. The only New Day member that did not participate in this Rumble was Xavier Woods because he had some type of an injury. Because on the pre-show, it was supposed to be all three members of the New Day taking on the team of Tyson Kidd, Cesaro, and Adam Rose. But because Xavier Woods was injured, um, it was just um, a Kofi and Big E taking on Cesaro and Tyson Kidd with Adam Rose and the Rosebuds uh, in their corner pretty much. Weird tag match. Um, but Big E number 20. Number 21. Remember this guy? Not Damian Sandow. Damian Mizdow. However, the Miz was going to go in. But um, he was taken out. until um, So Mizdow went and took his place. And, you know, he has a few seconds to shine until he was eliminated by Rusev. Number 22 was Jack Swagger. Followed by Ryback at number 23. Number 24. For the second year in a row, Corporate Kane. Cor and he kept mentioning how, you know, Kane was two eliminations away from becoming the all-time, having the all-time record for most eliminations all-time in the Royal Rumble match. And later on, they decided to capitalize on that, which was not a good idea. Number 25 was Dean Ambrose. The crowd actually got a little bit energetic because, you know, they wanted to see Ambrose win. Because they knew who was going to win based on, you know, what had happened with Daniel Bryan. Number 26, Titus O'Neil. Which, I will not deny, I actually like the music Titus O'Neil that have at this, at, at this time. Um, but, of course, he didn't last. He only lasted like four seconds or something like that. Um, he was eliminated by the double team of Reigns and Ambrose. Reigns, that's right, he did, did something else. He was just sitting around most of this match. Number 27 was the Intercontinental Champion, Bad News Barrett, which that gimmick would slowly wear off and they would give him the King Barrett gimmick, gimmick earlier this year and, and lead to him walk, leaving the WWE in 2016. Number 28 was Cesaro. He um, entered number 28, um, and then Rusev would eliminate Big E. Number 29. The Big Show. This heel run by The Big Show, joining the authority, was one of the worst things I have seen so far as a wrestling fan. The way he was booked, he was booked as just trying to be the dom most dominating heel on the main roster, when it was obvious that Big Show just didn't fit in with this newer talent, and it just wasn't entertaining, it was boring, we had seen him do this stuff how many times, and it was just terrible. Meantime, today, 2017, he was a babyface and did a heck of a job at putting over Braun Strowman because he did not sound like a giant child whenever in, in his promos and whatnot. And he just 
he he just meshed well with Braun Strowman. So they made Big Show into an attraction and not a full time wrestler, and look what happens. You were able to, you know, make him at least mean something something meaningful. But Big Show comes in. And him and Kane team up because they're the only two powerhouses in this match, right? So they take out Ryback. Big Show takes out Swagger. Number 30 was Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler to me was my last hope to make this Royal Rumble match actually mean something. But we have we have Ziggler get up to a good start. He did have a good elimination on uh, Bad News Barrett, which I didn't mind that. He eliminated Cesaro, which I'm like, all right. But then it was Big Show and Kane taking out the trash. They knocked out Ziggler. They pretty much just, you know, just like picked him up as he was like a dead body and tossed him over like he was a dead carcass. They did the same thing to Bray Wyatt. So at first, it looks like the final four is Ambrose... Reigns, both had not done much at all in this match, but we all knew who was going to win. And Kane and the Big Show. Why? Why are you going giving Kane the Big Show, the fi- part of the final four in this match at all, make try to make it look strong? So Reigns and Ambrose, you know, they're buddies. They tried teaming up to take out Kane and the Big Show, but unfortunately, Ambrose faces the same wrath as what happened to the past couple superstars. Knocked out and just dumped out like he's a piece of garbage. It comes down to Roman Reigns, Kane, and The Big Show in 2015. Two guys that Roman Reigns had taken out enough leading up to this Royal Rumble match to begin with. He was out... He was out for three months with a hernia injury. So he missed some time to get those big wins and to allow the crowd to grow on him more as a, as a single star baby face. Instead, we're just getting him shoved down our throats, going up against two guys that are way past their time in their career. And we knew that Roman could outtake them, outdo them both. Because why would you want the main event of WrestleMania to either be Kane or Big Show versus Brock Lesnar? So, Roman's fighting him off. The crowd is booing, chanting, we want refunds. I'm back at the house at Dan's, all ticked off. And I have another story involved in that night, too. I'm going to share briefly when I finish this. And so, finally, something happens where Kane and Big Show accidentally get into a fight. And they implode. They start brawling with each other. So, Roman eliminates them both. The match is over, we think, but not quite possible. So, Kane and the Big Show get right back in there and attack Roman Reigns. All of a sudden, The Rock's coming out, and he just gets Big Show and Kane out of there. Now, we all love The Rock, but why did he show up and nothing else happened afterwards involving The Rock, except for he showed up at WrestleMania and him and Ronda Rousey beat down the authority. All right, cool, but still, what was the point of him showing up? Why? So that we win Boo Roman Reigns out of the building. But, however, when Rock got out of the ring, Rusev, I don't know how long he had been sitting out there, Definitely not as long as Santino Morella had been laying on the outside of the ring and entered the ring for a couple seconds before he got eliminated by Roman, and Roman officially wins the 2015 Royal Rumble match. Very predictable, and we all knew it was going to happen. This Royal Rumble match sucked. It was awful. To me, even after watching all these Rumbles, to me, this was the worst Royal Rumble match of all time. Not because I saw it live for the first time, well, I mean, mean that when it ha- I saw what happened the first time, but because let's look at this the history a little bit here. Okay, so 1995 and 96 are probably the, the two, the next two worst rumbles in my opinion. 93 also is down there as well. Um, but here's the thing: WWE didn't have the talent that time. Okay, you know they at least had you know a strong baby face that people would still be happy to win in Shawn Michaels. This time. We have Roman Reigns, a guy who, yes, we all see the potential in Roman Reigns. Heck, I saw the potential in him. I wanted this freaking shirt. But he got injured for three months in the fall, and they bring him back, and they just book him in a way that Vince McMahon is forcing us to like him. And when you tell somebody to like somebody, they're, they're, you're, they're, you push on somebody, it's not going to work. You got to let them grow on you. You know, I like Roman Reigns. I see the potential. I saw the potential in him. He's gotten better since this. This Don't get me wrong. He has. But Roman Reigns that night was just a piece of Vince McMahon 
telling the crowd to pretty much suck it. And screw the fact that we're not going to do what you want. We're going to do what we want. It began the era of what we're in today of a very inconsistent product, to me, in my opinion. Anybody else could have won this Royal Rumble match. If it was booked like the way it was with Kane and the Big Show making everybody look like idiots and dumping out Daniel Bryan so early, anybody could have still won this match and it still would not have been that good. It would have been a little bit better because, you know, the guy that, you know, the head of the company is pushing on us isn't, um, you know, didn't win, but still, nobody else came out of this match looking strong. Yes, Bray Wyatt and Rusev did have a good showing, but where did it take them to? They were dumped, both dumped, well, Bray Wyatt, at least, Rusev's not as much dumped out like, like garbage, but still, it didn't lead to anything big for any of these guys. It did not. It, it just disgusted me how bad this rumble was, how terribly booked it was. Literally, people were asking for refunds. The hashtag cancel the network was on next. You had to go as far as trying to get The Rock to put over Roman Reigns. Uh uh. If you would have maybe even had, if it would have been maybe like Bray Wyatt and Rusev and Daniel Bryan as the final four, okay. It would have been better and Roman Reigns would have been a little more respected as the winner for that match. But you had to insert the big show and uh, Kane. Guys who we know, Bray Wyatt, I mean, Randy, wow, I'm way off here. Roman Reigns had taken out how many times? And they're way past the time. Boring, not entertaining at all. So that is why I'm considering this the worst Royal Rumble match of all time. Because the last your name was Roman Reigns, you came out of that Royal Rumble match with no direction whatsoever. This whole pay-per-view was not that good to begin with. The only thing good about this pay-per-view was the triple threat match for the championship between Seth Rollins, John Cena, and Brock Lesnar. Awesome match. The rest of the card, besides the Royal Rumble match, were all pointless tag matches. That's all it was. We had um, the Ascension taking on a New Age Outlaws, which that was being the downfall of the Ascension. We had that pre-show match between New Day, who were very green, against Tyson Kidd Cesaro with Adam Rose in their corner. We had a a um, Divas tag match with Paige and Natalia taking on the Bell Twins. Like, What was the point of that? So a very poor show, with the exception of that triple threat match. Let's go over the numbers here, and then let's get out of here. Um, so the Miz, the number one, 401, no eliminations. R-Truth, 413, no eliminations. Bubba Ray Dudley, 522, two eliminations. Luke Harper, 342, no eliminations. Number five, um, Bray Wyatt, uh, 4729, six eliminations. Uh, Curtis Axel, number six, who did not enter because he was attacked by Eric Grove before entering, so he had no eliminations. Um, but it says he was in there for nearly three years. This is whenever they did the Axel Mania gimmick. They're trying to make him and Damian, I mean, Macho Mandow, the, um, the Mega Powers 2.0 until uh, Hogan was fired, so they had to drop that gimmick. Um, so yeah, so technically Axel was in, was in the Rumble for nearly three years, according to um, Wikipedia. Uh, number seven was the Bogeyman, 47 seconds eliminations. Sin Cara, number eight, 37 seconds eliminations. Number nine was Zack Ryder, uh, 34 seconds no eliminations. Daniel Bryan, number 10, 10.36, one elimination. Number 11 was Fondango, 7.50, no eliminations. 12 was Tyson Kidd, 2.41, no eliminations. Stardust, number 13, 12.49, no eliminations. Uh, DDP, number 14, 2.47, no eliminations. Rusev, number 15, 35.40, six eliminations. Uh, Goldust, number 16, 6.35, no eliminations. Kofi Kings, number 17, 3.04, no eliminations. Adam Rose, number 18, eight seconds, no eliminations. Roman Reigns, number 19, 27, 29, six eliminations. Number 20 was Big E, 15, 04, no eliminations. 21, Damian Mizdow, 18 seconds, no eliminations. Jack Swagger, 13, 06, no eliminations. Ryback, 11, 15, no eliminations. Kane, 17, 13, four eliminations. That did also break the record for the most eliminations all time in a Royal Rumble match. Ugh. Dean Ambrose, number 25, 10, 41 elimination. Tyus O'Neil, number 26, four seconds with no eliminations. Uh, Bad News Barrett, the Intercontinental Champion, number 27, 6, 10, no eliminations. Cesaro, number 28, 5, 16, no eliminations. Big Show, number 29, 8, 39, five eliminations. 
And uh, Dolph Ziggler number 32, 29, two eliminations. So those were the numbers for them. Uh, the overall numbers, again, the winner was Roman Reigns. The longest time was Bray Wyatt, technically at 47, 29. But you have Curtis Axel never entered the match, but you claim he was in there for nearly three years because he never really got eliminated until he entered the Royal Rumble match once again. Um, the most eliminations were by um, Bray Wyatt. Rusev and Roman Reigns, all three of them had six apiece. And the total time, this was 59 minutes and 31 seconds. Again, this this night was just sad, especially for me. You know, I just bought this Roman Reigns shirt. It was a stab in the heart. I've been fighting my ways to try to find my reasons to, to want to root for Roman Reigns because he's an excellent wrestler. He can be an excellent star if booked right. He had a decent, he had a good 2017. I'll give it to him. 2017 was his best year as a single star, I'd say. But this night, man, it wasn't his fault, but I felt bad. And it's been tough for me to wear this shirt since. You know, I I, I always want Roman Reigns to be booked right. But WWE just didn't do that. Especially by having Kane and the freaking Big Show be the final three in the final four, actually. Since the final four was technically Big Show, Kane, Rusev, and Roman Reigns. And they didn't book Daniel Bryan right at all. This rumble was just a stab in the heart. And the WWE saying, screw it. They couldn't eliminate Daniel Bryan so early, so that way they wouldn't hate Roman Reigns as much. Well, that made us hate Roman Reigns even more, unfortunately. But, despite all that and the bad booking, WrestleMania 31 still turned out to be a pretty good show. I do recommend watching it if you haven't yet. But that is it for this Royal Rumble Retro Recap and Review. As much as I hate to do this, I was close to giving this Rumble a D- minus because of, you know, the stuff with Bray and Rusev. At least it w- w- was good. But it, this Rumble led to nowhere for any anybody at all. So because of that, I had to give this Rumble an F. The first review where I've given a show or a segment an F. This Royal Rumble match deserves an F. To me, the worst Royal, match, Royal Rumble match in WWE history. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section. Like and subscribe more kind of come to the channel and follow me on Twitter at DemandAirborne93. We have two more reviews left for this. Sorry about the rant, guys, but that's my thoughts. Oh, and also, before I go, also, another thing about, about this night, and this was on me, not WWE. I would not, I didn't have the network at this time. And the only way I could watch it was I went to my friend Dan Guys' house, which he was going to have his rumble party. But they were calling for a lot of snow that night. So Dan told me if you don't want to feel safe coming, then don't don't worry about it. Don't risk yourself. But I said, you know what? I said, this is going to be an exciting night. I got to come. I still went, and this show just sucked, and I had to drive home in six inches of snow that night. I mean, that's on me. I can't blame WB for that, but the bad luck I sure had that night because of that. But I just had to front and say that. But yeah, once again, subscribe, like, follow me on Twitter. We have two more of these reviews left. Next up will be the 2016 Royal Rumble, which – is one of my favorite rumbles of all time, I shall say. Uh, But until then, guys, I am the Club of the Man 1993. Have a great night.